Welcome to the Mountain Misfits Podcast, episode One. numero uno. Yes. Can you believe it's the first episode already? It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a long road. <laughs> if you had any idea what it took to get here. <laughs> Actually, it did. <laughs> it did take a long time. So I'm Rad, and this is... Vita. And we are travelers, trailblazers, naturalists who just really want to bring everything that we do outside to, to you. you. We bring the outdoors to you through your phone. <laughs> through your phone, or if you're really old, your desktop computer. Your desktop like computer. Like me. No. <laughs> Whatever works. So the, the idea is we just, ha- we just naturally go out and we just have a lot of different adventures. Yeah. And we kind of document and capture those adventures. And this podcast is just another way for us to share what we learn and where what we experiences, experiences, experience and where we go. This is us. This is us. And this is our adventure. And that's just uh, being shared with you. That's basically it. We're not here to advise or tell you or how to do this or that. <laughs> I, don't, I actually don't like it. Ugh. Should we have like a disclaimer like they have on drug? This is not meant to be medical advice. Yeah, this yeah. is not meant to be hiking advice. <laughs> we serve more as a warning than advice. This yes. is what not to do. Bad example? <laughs> Bad I example. I think we do well. <laughs> we do pretty good. We do all right. I mean, <laughs> we've had a few misadventures, but considering the fact that we've been hiking, at least I've been hiking for, since I've known you for 14 years and you've mm-hmm. been hiking all your life, we've had... Um, a few misadventures, which is not bad. I think it's still less than 5%. Or oh, a lot less than 5%. It's less than 5%. Yeah. But those notable misadventures, and we will you get to re- misadventures, are notable. You always remember that. Yep. <laughs> so, Vita, as we started this whole thing, and we, start, we started Mountain Misfits, one of the, the big things that always was kind of knocking in my noodle was like, what? does getting outside mean to me? What does adventure mean to me? What does hiking mean to, mean to me? So I'm going to ask you, what does what we do at Mountain Misfits mean to you? What it means to me? Yeah. Um, I guess what it means to me is going to shift and evolve over time, depending on the circumstances that I'm in. Uh, but these days, uh, adventures means getting away from my laptop and from my computer and from, uh, you know, being indoors. So it's nice to get some fresh air. It's nice to see greenery, nice sceneries. Um, uh, that's what it means, basically. Getting a little solitude, uh, get my head straight, and uh, that sort of stuff. So it's really kind of a... Uh, a sp- I hate to use these words, but it's like a spiritual restoration. No, but it, it's like restoring your energy, restoring your mental It totally health. is. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, a lot of things sound cliche, um, and I would hate to say it, but maybe they're cliche because everyone experiences them. Right. And they utter it, and they voice it, and then it just becomes cliche. But, you know, if you're an outsider listening in, you're like, same old, same old, whatever. But, Mm -hmm. you know, when you experience it, you're like, "Uh, these are the exact words I have to describe that feeling. And it's, you know, I don't have a better way to describe it. So, you know, if it sounds cliche... Well, I guess it is cliche. It is cliche. <laughs> but it is what it is. So it really is, like you said, it, it, it's, it's restorative for you. It's, it's the break from the mundane day-to-day. It's the mental the, break. Yeah. And do you find, like, when you go outside and you're doing this thing, is it kind of the unexpected that really plays in that? You don't know what's around the next corner. You don't know really what's going to happen minute to minute, what you might experience. Well, um unexpected um i don't mind doing some of our uh, i was gonna say regular hikes, but i do mind <laughs> i don't like to repeat a whole lot of hikes uh for me adventure means um a sense of uh, not knowing mm-hmm. uh, sense of wonder sense of element of surprise um so when we go to a new hike, it kind of has all of that. Right. So that's what it means. Is that was that what the question? That was. What I think the, I've had too much beer. <laughs> yes. And speaking of beer, we have to give just a little shout out to Lola Peak Brewing Company, whose uh, community room we're recording in today. Yes. 
uh, Lola Peak Brewing Company. Also has this delicious Oktoberfest. Yeah. So uh, we're just, uh, basically, we're just appreciating them by letting us use the room. Exactly. Um, in exchange for uh, promo. <laughs> they earned it, I suppose. They, <laughs> I, I earned it, it, I suppose. <laughs> Shit, you have to cut all of this out. No. No. I just, for some reason, my brain just got super sleepy. I don't know if it's the alcohol or I just need to eat or what. Okay. But, uh, you know, I was really up to par for the other ones. No, you're, some you're still doing good. Okay, you're, cut you're me out. You're over, you're overthinking. Okay, all right. All right. Good. You do the most of the talking. I'll chime in. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. All right. So, I'm, I'm glad that we heard, like, how you relate to the outdoors and what it means to you i think in the next podcast maybe i will have what it means to me we'll kind of we'll oh i didn't know up. i was being interviewed you're being interviewed i you should have told me so i could have written down my thoughts see that's the problem i know that's a good way to ruin it that's a good way to ruin it i really like the outdoors <laughs> because it makes me feel good <laughs> yeah basically you can sum it up in that very <laughs> profound. I don't know why Forrest Gump just um, uh, chimed in my head. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> shit happens sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of shit not happening. Yeah. We just recently got to go to your personal happy place. Yes. And we made it to Glacier National Park on probably two of the most ridiculous, spectacular fall days I've ever seen in Montana. We lucked out and we planned well. It, well, I don't know if we planned well. I think there was a lot of luck involved in that, that decision. But we spent two days in Glacier and we did two hikes that neither of us have done before. Brand new. And they were both just absolutely outstanding. One more than the one more outstanding than the other. Well, one okay. No. Well, different. They're different from each okay. other. Okay. I don't mind rating hikes. Oh, I know you have a. You can't. I know you can't. I like them all. Yeah, I know you're like a father that has uh, has a uh, hard time uh, deciding who his favorite child is. Well, they might get <laughs> jealous of each other, and I can't have that in my happy little family. Everybody yeah, has to be. I know equal. that's exactly what you're doing. <laughs> so I got to keep them all in line. So the first hike we did is surprisingly available to people, and very few people do it. It's, uh, yeah, it's very, um, it's in plain sight. You yeah. know how sometimes you open the fridge door and you're looking for something that's right in front of you? Never happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> happens to you just about every single time, time you open, I open the, the fridge, fridge door. door. Yeah, so this hike was exactly that. The hike that's right in front of everyone, but no one takes it. Yeah. Mostly because it's overshadowed by the adjacent trail. Exactly. Big time. And the hike we're, we're speaking of, you will not find in a lot of guidebooks. You will not find it as an official trail from Glacier National Park. But it's called the Dragon's Tail. My God, you know what? I just imagined a whole uh, mob of outdoorsy hikers chiming in about how dare you mention the name of a hike. <laughs> Oh, I'm not worried about that. Tag responsibly. No, I don't worry about those people at all. They worry about it's you. Out, it's out there. It's out there. It's that, how do you think we found it? Okay? It's out there. Now you're some, apparently you're supposed to keep that to yourself. No. And be selfish. I think you're just one once bitten, twice shy, shy by the hiking keyboard warriors of Facebook. No, no there are a few of them. All right, so... Ah, oh, shit. I really shouldn't. I'm sleepy. I shouldn't. Yeah. Do you want to do it another time? No, no, we'll, we'll keep going. The only ah. thing is, it's on those things that are yeah. negative. Okay. No need to, no need to right. mention it. Okay, fine. Cut it out. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Unless we're specifically talking about those. Okay, okay, right. okay. I really shouldn't, honestly. I think I was done at 4.14. <laughs> okay. 15 minutes We'll just minutes plow in. through, huh? Okay. I'll do most of the talking. Yeah, you do that. Okay. I'll just nod and say hi. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You chime in and you do your thing, okay? Just... Okay. So... Uh, so this trail that we keep hawking on, on about is actually at Logan Pass, which is probably the most popular area of the entire park yeah. in Glacier National Park. 
and it is off the Highline Trail. So every time that you see a group of people walking on a half pavement, half boardwalk trail going up to see this unbelievable vista of Hidden Lake and Mount Reynolds and this vista from Glacier that you see in about 8,000 postcards. Yeah. We go up that trail and we take a left. Yeah. And by taking a left, we, we get on a trail called the Dragon's Tail. Yeah. And the Dragon's Tail actually goes along the ridge leading east of the Hidden Lake Pass. And it goes across this tail, and instantly you are away from everybody. When you're on that Hidden Lake Trail, you're with the throng of people. It, you know, it wasn't that busy when we were there, but we've seen it where it's literally elbows, assholes, it's crowded. And we were on there and instantly we were by ourselves, mm -hmm. save for two couples that we met along the mm -hmm. six mile route that we took. So we hiked an entire six miles and ran into four people. And four very cool people. And they were all, they were awesome. They were totally awesome. And... So you actually go through two passes, and you go through this talus fields, and you're above what's an area that's called the Hanging Gardens at Logan Pass. So you can see all the Hanging Garden, and there was a little bit of wind on our side of the ridge. 70 and, miles per hour, I think and, I could say, say a little bit. What happened as soon as you hit the pass? 70 mile an hour, couldn't hear anything. Things blowing. I remember my hat blew off my hat in my head. I caught it midair, yeah. <laughs> and it was I. All I all I had to do to judge the speed of the wind was how fast does it feel when I put my head out of a moving car. <laughs> That's all I had to judge well, the speed. Were you right though? Oh, there's no weather station. I was going to say, there, did so you double check? No, it's it's our guess. But it was these paths. So like all this wind was funneled through this pass. And it was so forceful, it was almost that kind of wind, like if you felt like you jumped up, didn't you feel like you would have moved a few feet before you hit the ground again? Yes, I actually did. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, the only time in my life I wished I was fatter. <laughs> I wish I was fatter and lower to the ground. <laughs> yeah. And you're already low, low. <laughs> so, uh, Shorty got low, low. <laughs> low, low, exactly, <laughs> low. Um, but we got to this first pass, and then you're looking up at just the flanks of Mount Reynolds, and it just kind of looms and towers above you. But when you look below, you have this view of Hidden Lake that I have never seen a picture of. Yeah. And it, it just, it turns something that, is usually like a mundane hike, like, oh, let's go see it. But, I, you know, hell, I think I've done Hidden Lake 20 times. Yeah. You know, but it, but seeing it from this angle was instantly, it was like, oh, my God, this is something new and different, and I'm seeing it from this angle, and this is really cool. And a little wild, as Vita digs into the <laughs> chocolate. So, but from there, from that pass, you go along the side of Mount Reynolds, for like a mile on all in these various scree and talus slopes. And it's not overly steep, it's actually a pretty straight, there's one little steep section, but it's pretty much flat going across the side hill. But the coolest part to me is because there are all those belt formation rocks, which oh, yeah. are rocks that are like 1.4 to 1.2 billion years old. Mm -hmm. The colors of their stones there's yellows and reds yes. and almost blues. Yeah, the, I've noticed that. Yeah. I noticed that. I think they call it dusky blue. Ooh. Yeah. Fancy. Um, so well past just gray. Straight yeah. up blue. Super colorful. So yeah. you have this jumble of color. Vibrant. And then when you look at individual rocks, there's all these ripples from the ancient sea or mud cracks where the sea had pulled out and the mud had, you know, dried and cracked. I think you could do an entire episode on the geology of the place. Oh, you could do an Easily. entire life on the geology of the place. Yeah. And so it was, it was for me being kind of a little bit of a geology nerd. 
it was so super cool to be able to walk through there and just picking all these things out like oh look at these mud cracks look at this 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 cool thing and so that was kind of fun going along there for me even though the wind was still screaming here yeah. and there but you saw these these things and then we come to the second pass in Describe yeah. what you see when you come to that second bat. Now, the wind's probably going 100 miles an yeah. hour now. Oh, yeah. It's kind of eerie. I mean, you're so excited. To, um, I mean, you're just... It's uh, indescribable, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Um, but then there's a little bit of eerie discomfort at the same time because... Uh, the wind. Yeah, it, well, it was so It could powerful. pick you up, and right. then you could... You feel like you're going to get blown off of yeah. this thing almost, yeah. Yep. And we Which were, is why we locked arms. <laughs> I think that was the smartest thing we did. We did lock arms. And uh, we were looking down there, and you can see down another drainage on the other side. Yeah. So you see an area called Twin Lakes, which you saw way down below us. Mm -hmm. You definitely did your research, didn't I you? I did. I got these names down. I know. I'm a, I'm a map nerd, you know. Doink. <laughs> Here's the map nerds. <laughs> but, you know, on one side of this really narrow pass, I mean, it, it's not a lot of square feet that you're standing on before it gets a little vertical. Yeah. And we're standing there. With and one, the wind blowing. And, and wind honestly, blowing. Uh, that's... That's called adventure, you asked me earlier. That's called yeah. adventure. You're very excited. You're having a fantastic time, but you know there's still a little bit of an element of danger involved. Right. Just a little bit. Just, yeah, there is a touch. A touch. And when I was there, I just, I was, just, it was, it, to me, the kind of the, the mind trick of it was, is here I am looking at Hidden Lake and Oval Tours Floral Park from a view that I've never seen before. And down the other side to our left is this other drainage that I've never laid eyes upon. So it's brand new virgin territory for me. Yeah. So I th to me, that was the exciting part. Now there's no hikes leading there, right? It's all back, it's all I off trail. I was going to say, it's all back country. It has it's not all, been explored. Yeah. No. Well, it's been explored, but not okay, by us. Okay, never, never mind. Never mind. I mean, people have done it, mm -hmm. but I mean... That's a commitment of time and energy. You gotta go across country without a trail now. So now you're working game trails, and we're talking significant grizzly country too. So who mm. knows what you're gonna run into? Yeah. You know, one of these. So, but we, we looked at what's actually called the Dragon's Tail, which is this little thin, thin, fin of sheer rock that leads out for maybe a maybe a mile and it is maybe five six feet wide yeah it is not very wide at all and it has a lot of scrambles and up and down and we did let discretion be the better part of valor and we nixed that and idea. that park ranger had warned us that someone did fall off there and die they fell off and died yeah <laughs> so with uh 70 to 100 mile an hour winds is probably not the safest thing to yeah. walk on a fin of rock with 1,000 feet on either side. Better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. So we came back through the wind and um, got all the way back to the crowds at the Hidden Lake Trail. And we walked out through the parking lot. And we were able to park in, in the Logan Pass parking lot. I which, know, imagine that. Which I mean, you guys been... have no idea how packed Glacier National Park has been for the past... Years. Years, like four or five years. years. Now, so, yeah. you know, um, commuting to the trailheads, uh, an issue, a uh, big time issue. Well, and People get into brawls over a parking lot. Out and out fights. Yes. Yeah. Well, and this is why one of the reasons why we went during the shoulder season. It might be one of the last weekends that uh, going to the Sun Road is open. Yeah. And because of that, we went into the parking lot. Everyone else went right. I went left. Parking spot. Yeah, we did pretty good. So we were right in there. Uh, but on the way back down, even though I usually think of driving as, okay, who cares? We're just driving. Oh, yeah. But the fall colors. Spectacular. Were, unimaginable yeah this the whole va the valley looking down towards mcdonald creek was just 
all gold. Uh, I mean, we don't have um, the maple leaves like uh, Cal like BC, Vancouver, BC, Canada. Or the East Coast. I've never been to yeah. East Coast, so I can't yeah. make the comparison. But I have been to Vancouver, and I know what those colors are. Different shades of red, pink, uh, different shades of orange, magenta, uh, maroon, uh, all these wonderful, wonderful colors. Um, we don't have those colors. We have right. lots of yellow, but these... There were different shades, subtle shades of yellow, and with the right light, they mm -hmm. literally looked like gold. Yeah, they were literally gold. Yeah. And, and like an orangish gold, you know, just unbelievable yeah, color. Yeah. And it was uh, all the hillsides. It was everywhere. Yeah. It was everything you looked just at. Just kind of showered with the... Uh, because in the park, let's see, like all the alders well, you know, had turned... <laughs> I was going to say gold no, shell. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> I backpedaled just in just time. Just backpedaled a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not very far, though, because <laughs> there it was. But like every hillside, because all the alders had, were changing, all the water birch were changing, the aspens were changing, the cottonwoods were changing. So literally, as we drove down the Going the Sun Road, which everybody should do once in their lifetime. Absolutely. We were literally in a tunnel of gold. Yeah. It was just unimaginable. And we were lucky enough to stay the night in the park in the Apgar campground. Yeah. And the next day, we woke up early-ish. Ish. Ish. There's no point in waking up very early in the shoulder season. It's really, really cold. Well, it doesn't get light until 8.30 anyway. So. Yeah. Um, it's cold. It's dark. You're not going to see anything. So I might as well sleep in, get a little rest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's what we did. We were cozy in our rooftop tent, which we have a review after a whole season of using our Schmitty built rooftop tent. We certainly tent. did. And you have a lot of footage. We have a lot of footage of that tent. And that mm -hmm. tent has been Solid. primo. Yeah. Absolutely primo. So we wake up that next morning. We're a little slow to go. We might have went just outside the, to the, of the park to West Glacier and got a cafe. Coffee. Well, it was coffee in name only. It was pretty watery. <laughs> Watered down, third run, water, <laughs> water, flavored water. That's a better way of describing it. $2 for like uh, a yeah. teeny tiniest uh, bit of coffee. End of the season, we're not buying any more coffee, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish they hadn't done that. But we uh, got the coffee. We headed back out on the Glen the Sun Road, and we went up and over Logan Pass and down the other side a little ways uh, to the Jackson Glacier Overlook. Yeah. And we went to another hike that neither of us have ever done. Yeah. And we went to Gunsight Lake. Spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. And the great part about this hike, you will never have a hike in your life that starts off easier. Yeah, but you know what that means. Starting off easy means finishing hard. <laughs> <laughs> the first mile is a rapid downhill. <laughs> yeah. But you know on the way back, this is going to be a rapid uphill. And we upped the difficulty level. So we, uh, we, we hiked this hike, and uh, you hike down from the Jackson Glacier Overlook. Uh, you come down to uh, Deadwood Falls, which is that cool chasm where the stone had just been water. It's like, and I hate to call it this, but it's like a poor man's avalanche gorge. It has kind of that same carve where the creek is really carved and oh, yeah, smoothed yeah, yeah. those rocks and made those almost Dr. Seuss shapes yes. yeah, in yeah. the rock. Weird colors in that. Uh, yeah, with belt, green. Forma yeah. belt formation rock. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I had seen that in a picture, I would have said this is f not photoshopped. It's uh, you put it in Lightroom and you went a little crazy with the saturation and the vibration. Yeah, it's but not it's, real. Yeah, yeah, I would have said not real, but that was freaking real. Yeah. And uh, the really cool thing is they have a brand new removable bridge over the St. Mary River. So they built that new bridge, that suspension bridge, yeah. and they take it out. I think, oh, they, I didn't I know think that. they took it out this week, actually. Oh, we might have yeah. been some of the last people to cross it. All right. And uh, this Listen bridge. Listen to me, keeping it all polite. I'm all about, you know, know. darn and. Uh, Darn and heck. And dang. And dang nabbit. I, yeah, I'm not really sure how I should. Uh, I'm trying to behave. It's, I'm like a, a girl on the first date. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I 
You know what? There are so many things I can say, and I'm not going to say a single one of them. I'm just tossing that key this away. This is me, such a lady. Such a, she's a lady. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that bridge is definitely a one-person experience because that thing starts rocking. When you get to the middle of it, yeah, I know. that thing is a bouncing. And it bounces like off time with your steps. If you stop, this is why you should like, keep going before the waves come back. <laughs> That's the thing. The waves go to yeah, the and trail they, and then they come back down to the yes, suspension bridge. That's how yeah. physics works. Do you guys remember from your physics class? It goes there, hits it, comes back, and you know, you go in this way and the waves coming at you. And uh, so we cross that bridge, and then we, we hike. It's like a very flat hike at that point. You're hiking along the St. Mary River, which is fantastic. It's very peaceful. It's, this is not an effort hike at this point. Yeah. This is a very, I'm enjoying the sun. It, it was nearly 70 degrees in October in Glacier National Park. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable the weather we have. T-shirt weather. T-shirts and shorts. Yeah. So I'm just, we're just grooving on the weather, and we're really enjoying ourselves. And then, then we, come to, we come to this big meadow on the St. Mary River. And I just want to walk out into the meadow to look for bear tracks in the mud. Yeah. And what, what did we see? What did you see? You saw it. The biggest goddamn moose God I, I have <laughs> ever seen in my life. Yeah. Just, I mean, this bull moose was not only a large rack, large antlers, but just this so body. I had a nice that, rack. <laughs> I'm a fan of nice racks. Yeah. I'm a big fan, lifelong fan of racks. <laughs> Oops. But uh, no, this is you know massive antlers, massive body. And when we first saw him, he was quarter he quartered away from us and went back into the willows. He certainly did, and I was kind of bummed that I didn't yeah. really get a good look at it. When all I got was ass shots, right? So I'm <laughs> going with the camera and I'm taking pictures. And all it is is one ass shot after the next. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. That, you know, that happens. But we saw him, and that's kind of cool. But then all of a sudden, he came back. Like a ghost, he appeared back out of the willows. Mm-hmm. And he walked along the willows on the opposite side of the river from us. And it, this is a small river. This river is maybe 20 feet wide. And he walked along the bank, and we could hear him making these grunt noises and all these noises that bull moose make associated with the rut. Mm-hmm. So he's fully on looking for girlfriends. Yeah. And then the most... Tinder. Tinder, dude. Tinder. It was, it was, it was uh, cervid tinder. <laughs> and if you don't know what cervid is, that's a fancy way to say deer. Uh-huh. And moose are deer. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, but then he halfway across the river staring right at us and relatively aggressive yes and yeah. I, isn't it fascinating that uh, we can read body language of animals I mean there's communi- clear communication uh, between species like interspecies communication yeah, we knew he was aggressive. I'm not a moose, but we, I knew what he was up to. Exactly. He's yep. staring right at you. He's standing up straight, looking right at you. Right. And he, he, so here he is midstream staring at us, posing out. I think I took about 350 pictures of him. Yeah, before you said, if he takes one more step, we should run. <laughs> I, 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 okay. Your Honor, I need to correct the record, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't say run. I said, get the hell out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and I asked, does your pepper spray work on moose? <laughs> and I said, no. I have no idea. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <laughs> well, let's give it a shot. <laughs> Those are fun times. Yeah. We might have had a case study. The first time pepper spray was used on a bull moose. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be the case study. You don't? No. <laughs> no. Case study. Verdict failed. <laughs> Did not work. So, but anyway, it turned out just perfectly fine. And so we left. What the, if it doesn't turn out perfect? Well, what if we're on the news the next day? Two idiots. <laughs> 
two goddamn jack wagons died. Died again. Got Thanks. Stomped, stomped by a moose. They had it coming. And there's a 30 second video that's getting passed around <laughs> on the entire social media. Watch this with, dummy get stomped. Exactly, with everyone. LOL, LOL. <laughs> Evolution taking care of the dummies. <laughs> That would be us. That would be us. Okay, that's not a great way to go. That's uh, that's fairly terrible. Uh, but anyways, everything worked out fine. Yeah. We got back on the trail. Uh, relatively, just one of the nicest grades on a trail for a cruise. If you want a long trail, and this trail in the books is 12.6 miles. It's off closer the books. To thir- it's, well, it's closer. Well, we'll get to off the books. But it's like one of the most mild up to Gunsight Lake grades, I can yeah. remember. On it's trail. long, it's but it's, it's a cruise, yeah. And so it's a matter of endurance, not power. And so it, things were very pretty. As we as we were hiking up towards Gunsight Lake, we can see Blackfoot Glacier and Jackson Glacier, but we're so much closer to them than you are on the, on the going on the sun road. Yeah. You can see the massive walls of ice that are still there. Yeah. And that to me was that was to me was pretty cool that I kept I kept tripping out looking at these glaciers going, you know, I see them from a distance and they tell me they receded and they have, but at the same time you're looking at them go they are still so massive. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you got that idea of how big they were that you just don't get from a distance. Perspective. And so you hike along this amazing view and all of a sudden you pop out in this Cirque Basin. And there's Gunsight Lake. There it is. And it's a pretty, pretty lake. And you can see Gunsight Pass, which for anyone that knows what a Gunsight looks like, that's what the pass looks like. That, you know, that shallow V notch, it looks like a gun, old-fashioned Gunsight. What the hell is a Gunsight? Gunsight is you had a notch with a, with a V at one end of the gun, and then you have a bead at the other end. So if you line those two up, that's where you shoot. Oh, okay. I did not get the so reference. So that's, that's why they call it gun sight. <laughs> and gun sight uh, lake uh, is definitely a little milky in color. Green? Yeah. Milky and green. Milky and green. And when we rolled up, we saw two, two another, people. Another couple. Another couple. Well, I saw the other couple. We, we should have come about a minute later. Yeah. They were in the midst of putting on swimsuits. <laughs> oh, they were friendly, and I don't really think they cared. So we ran into... Uh, you know what? We didn't get their permission, so I don't know if we can mention their names. Okay. Well, we can mention first names, but we don't know where they're from. Maybe we'll have an episode dedicated to all the cool people that okay. we met the along, cool. the, along, along the way. Along the trail. Which we certainly do. Okay. Fair enough. So we won't mention... Yeah. Ah, I see what I almost did there. No, uh, but we met these, these two folks, and we instantly got on like peas and carrots. Oh, they're wonderful. And we sat up there, and we just just talked and visited and I well I had brought in Vita had brought in because she's the official water beer hydration snacks food and camp. water yes you're food and you're the food and beverage the, committee of the I'm hike. the mobile pantry she is <laughs> and you had brought in from uh, Pioneer Meats we had brought in the sweet sriracha meat sticks yeah meat sticks which we had a couple bites of yep yeah, and we which, shared with our friends as well which are great uh, and those meat sticks I, we call that quality control because that's the stuff we sell so you know we take it with us on our hikes exactly. to uh, you know share out see share what people out, think yeah get their and opinion you can buy those meat sticks at thetasteofmontana.com. Yeah, uh, we have two different accounts, uh, if you guys didn't know. So this is Mountain Misfits, but we're also The Taste of Montana. That's so uh, if you're into food, if you're a foodie, hop over to the other side. The other side. So thetasteofmontana.com and look for the sriracha meat sticks. They're absolutely delicious. Yeah, so we liked it and our friends. New friends. New friends liked it as and well. And then we actually ended up hiking out with them. Yes. Uh, the rest of the way out. And I tell you, what, all we did was visit and talk. You the know, whole entire way. Uh, on the way up, where you, you and I are, this is how we hike on the way up, or uh, this is how I like. I shouldn't say we. I like to, I'm pretty type A on the way up because it's hard. 
-hmm. and I need to stay focused and I need to get to that goal because if I'm not focused I'm going to take forever and you know mm -hmm. it's a six mile hike becomes a six hour hike um, so I'm pretty type A I don't really look up but on the way back down I'm certainly taking my time and taking yep. pictures and taking in the senior scenery but we had company this time and I've caught myself paying more attention to the company and not even yeah. seeing the view. And uh, part of me didn't like that, but another part of me said, the company is pretty damn awesome. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna be able to hike this again, but I don't think I'll be able to visit with these two wonderful people ever again. Yeah, and we just had a blast and we, we hiked out and we we go across this suspension bridge again and yeah. there we are at the at this trail junction and they say well we're parked up here we're gonna go and vita and i go well we're parked over there we're, we're parked over there we're <laughs> over to the right here to the left and we say our goodbyes and off we go yeah and we start hiking along the saint mary river and things just didn't f it did, wasn't apparent right away Half mile in, both of us are having the same feeling, like, we have never seen, seen this, this before. before. Um, but we had already hiked, what, like 13, 14 miles, and uh, um, I, would, I was chalk, ch chalking it up to, you know, being tired and, you know, malfunction, brain malfunction, and, you know, I just... But you were having the same experience, yeah. kind of like, That's I don't exactly remember seeing any of this. I don't remember seeing it, but I'm talking myself into it. I'm literally talking myself, because I'm tired. Okay, it's this way. It's this way. So we go a little because over... Because the alternative would have meant... We went over a half mile. <laughs> we had to turn around, go back to the trail junction where we said goodbye to our new friends. And then you remember that easy downhill we had? Yeah. Now that became a thousand foot... Uphill. Uphill. Man. <laughs> Last mile, we're 13 and a half miles into the day. Yeah. And we had a pound out pretty steep uphill. And I don't know about you, but I was on completely empty stomach the entire time. I don't know why I didn't eat, just, you know, just didn't too Didn't occur to you? Mm, yeah, you know, yeah. just too excited, looking at things and all that. Forget that I'm hungry, but damn, I did that uphill and empty after 13 miles. <laughs> You know what? I was I'm pooped too. I'm still sore. I mean, it's my arms. They're still sore? Yes, my arms are sore. My legs are fine. My arms mostly because I had to. <laughs> yep. Like so we got up to the hill, we got to the car, and we came home. But just so everyone knows, that if you really want to see the trail maps, all the pictures we took of these two hikes, these adventures, they're all over at mountainmisfits.com. God, MTN. you cut that one short pretty quick, didn't you? I did. <laughs> okay, we're running out of time, and we need to vacate this area. So this story, Wait. we might have to table it. No, no, story's over. Story's over? Story's over. Never mind that. If you want to see anything of these two hikes, the, all the pictures we have, we have videos of both of these hikes, trail maps for both of these hikes. So you don't do what we did. These are all on our Mountain Misfits website, which is mtnmisfits.com. Or you can go to any social platform and yeah. look up mtnmisfits.com and you can... You can find all the stuff that we do. If there's any issues, don't hesitate to DM. I'm always there checking. DM her, not me. I'm out. I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm out. I'm not in that. But the other thing we have about Misfits, just a little plug a -roo, Yeah. We have started to have apparel. We started to have oh, our, yeah. own, yeah, our yeah. own apparel designs. Pretty exciting, actually. So we have a few apparel designs out there, and we just want to see what you guys like, Things. what you don't like feel free to give us feedback on it yeah. and we also have photographic prints of my photo work are also available on mountainmisfits.com yeah. so Brad's a professional photographer and uh, so he does have very good photos for you guys to enjoy we do so that will be the very first episode of the Mountain Misfits podcast yeah. we, I, we how stuck do you it, think we did we stuck it like a hog okay good alright and uh, with that we will be back with the second episode. Yes. All right. So I hope everyone gets outside, gets the trails. I know it's winter. That's not an excuse. There's still trails to be had all winter, all fall long. 
and everybody mm. can go out there and have fun. Vita's in on the winter hiking this year. She's totally down. Yeah. I just have to dress warm, I suppose. She's down. 